Hello, and welcome to this week's session of Encompass Live. Uh, Encompass Live is the Nebraska Library Commission's weekly online event where we cover um, various NLC activities and library topics presented by NLC staff and guest speakers. Um, we do these free one-hour sessions every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time. And we have a kind of mixture of things, presentations, interviews, book reviews, web tours, um, some mini training sessions maybe coming up, um, Q&A sessions, anything we can think of that might be of interest to Nebraska library world. Uh, this morning, we are going to have a session on free health resources from the National Library of Medicine. Um, Marty McGee and Mary Jo Ryan will be going through that with us. And I will now turn over the uh, controls <laughs> to you guys. And uh, go ahead. Here's your mouse. Oh, okay. No video? Okay, there we, we are. are. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm Mary Jo Ryan from the Nebraska Library Commission, and I'm very pleased today to be able to introduce Marty McGee. Mm -hmm. Marty McGee, medical librarian from the uh, National Library of Medicine. She's with the, uh, what's it called, the National Network Libraries of Medicine, and she's mm -hmm. based at Magoon Library of Medicine at uh, University of Nebraska Medical Center in Omaha. Marty's been doing a lot of projects with us. We've had a lot of fun doing some health information resources, training across the state. We worked with some uh, small groups in different communities that were doing projects to get the word out about health information in their communities. Mm -hmm. um, we've just, we've done your teaching, LTA classes as well. Mm -hmm. Anything else about you I need to tell them? <laughs> I think the list is too long. Right oh, the list is too long, yeah. yes. So we'll just, without further ado, I'll just turn this over to Marty McGee, and okay. you can talk a little bit about what you think we need to do to feel the love. Okay, thank you, Mary Jo. I'm delighted to be here, and obviously we've themed today's program around feel the love because we're pretty close to Valentine's Day, and we want everybody to be healthy in any case. So I'm going to uh, run you through a number of things, but first, before we get started, here is my contact information. Uh, this PowerPoint is going to be posted out on uh, the Nebraska Library Commission website. It's also going to be on the Mid-Continental Region site, which is the six states that I serve here. So we'll go ahead and get started. Whoops. Wrong one. You want to go over to the little there we go. I got to find the right buttons here. Okay. All right. We are uh, going to start talking first about some National Library of Medicine websites. And might I say, I was delighted to see a couple of medical librarians on our call today. So I'm glad you've joined us. Some of this may be redundant for you, but we'll go through Medline Plus fairly quickly because I think. Most of you have probably heard of that before. Uh, we're also going to cover some other librarian resources, and then I'm going to share with you some promotional ideas, because we think a lot of what libraries should be doing today is out doing outreach, things outside their library. And I'm a huge fan of that, Marty. That's right. <laughs> we all have this kind of advocacy uh, behind us that we need to be paying attention to. So, whoops, I hit the up instead of the down. I'll get the right one now. There you go. <laughs> okay, so first we're going to cover some websites. So um, first I'm going to talk about the National Library of Medicine. For those of you who don't know, it's in Bethesda, Maryland. It's part of the National Institutes of Health. And if you go on to the main website, and the URL is listed here, you'll see there is a place that's listed for librarians. And then uh, the other red arrow is pointing down towards Medline Plus, which of course is probably one of our most heavily used databases. The National Library of Medicine has about 80 different databases ranging from Medline Plus, which is really for consumers, uh, to things like research on the human genome, which I would have no clue how to tell you how to use. Uh, but there are plenty of people who do. So we're glad that we have the range for everyone uh, to find what they need to on our site. Uh, I want to stress that you can get in touch with a national network of libraries of medicine person, such as myself, anywhere in the United States. So uh, we are broken into eight different regions, and you can see those represented here. Uh, we are the purple region, the mid-continental region. And if you dial that 800-338-7657, that will get you to our offices. So if you wanted to reach me, you dial that number, and you'd listen for Nebraska liaison, and eventually you would get to me. Do you uh, cover all those states, Marty, or just um, Nebraska? I, well, I cover primarily in Nebraska, but I also wear what's called the education hat or the project and so I cover education for the entire six states so if librarians need help learning how to do a PowerPoint or put together a Camtasia video or do something even like a web conference we can assist them with those kinds of activities uh, so that 800 number however if you were located let's say in North Dakota your central offices are in Chicago. So if you dialed that 800 number and you were in North Dakota, it would take you to the Chicago office. So it depends on where you're located, where that 800 number takes you. 
Okay, this is Medline Plus. Um, I'm guessing most of you have probably used Medline Plus or heard of it before. Uh, this is just a quick snapshot of all the things that are available and the kinds of updates that happen. Uh, when we go to our Medical Library Association Conference, which is held on a yearly basis, we get all the updates on, on PubMed. This happened to be the one that we got last year. So I'm not gonna go into each one of these, but I'll cover a few of these things on following slides. Uh, so here's Medline Plus. Uh, the thing that I wanted to mention today and kind of stress here, if you can see health topics, drug supplements, etc. on the left side. If you look down there at directories, this is what I want to talk about today. And if you click on that, you'll get to a choice and libraries will be at the top of that next page. And then you'll get to... Uh, to another screen, and I'm going to talk about that too. This one is the health topics page, though, which was the first click, and now they have divided it so you have body uh, body location. So if you have something wrong with your back, you could find your back area or your spine area and go through it that way. The other um, demographic groups over here, if you're doing particular programming, let's say for a youth group or maybe a senior group, you might want to look at the resources that are included there. Uh, if you're doing health and wellness, maybe you have an activity going on where you're promoting that in your community, you might want to highlight this part of the website so people can see that kind of information too. Uh, here are the interactive body maps. So for example, if you've gone into the spine part of things, and here you can see the spine, then it gives you some different kinds of conditions that it, uh, can be affected there. And then if you're actually in the live site, when you scroll over these areas, it turns green whenever you're uh, on the one that it's talking about. So uh, it makes it very clear uh, where those parts of the body are and how you can refer to them. Marty, this seems like it would be a really good resource to recommend to uh, health science educators in the schools. I don't know Absolutely. if there's any school media specialists listening in with us, but it public is. libraries could certainly recommend this site to the school. You bet. And, you know, maybe that's a great idea for Outreach, Mary Jo, is really making a connection with your high school media librarian and just letting them know about about some of these things. You know, a half hour with them can be time really well spent. They can disperse it to their teachers from there or go to a parent teacher organization meeting or be a presenter. It'd be a great thing to do. Um, this next one is just an example of what comes out of the encyclopedia. I just wanted to show you that they have some really great illustrations. Things are well marked. There are links to other uh, resources as well. Related topics. Sometimes you don't always know what something is called. So if you, you know, put in coronary artery disease, uh, you know, then you can find angina or some of these other topics. Uh, Go Local, we're going to talk about a minute in a minute. And here is just additional information from the National Institutes of Health. The National Institutes of Health actually has several smaller organizations that are part of it. This one happens to be National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, so you can go there for more information, too. And it's linked from the Medline Plus website. Uh, this is the drug information and herbs and supplements. And I, I want to make this distinction here. Drug information is generally going to be prescription drugs or over-the-counter kinds of drugs. Herbs and supplements are, are going to be just what it says, herbs and supplements. And that was added just a couple of years ago because people don't always know a great deal about it. Uh, but uh, you can see the distinction here, and you get to the, both of them from an alphabetical list. Uh, Medline Plus uh, also has a, a joint relationship called Go Local. We do have this in Nebraska, which allows you to find doctors or physicians or support groups or uh, many other different kinds of things on a local basis. So if you went to the Go Local button that was off the Medline Plus website, you'd get to this site. You would click on Nebraska. And it would bring up a map of Nebraska and all the different counties. So you could click on one of the counties, or if you wanted to search it by zip code, you can do that as well. I happened to set this one for Douglas, so I clicked on Douglas, and I was searching for diabetes resources. 
So you can see all the resources in Douglas County, there's 196 clinics, I think. Uh, community clinics, there's a couple of those. Um, look at the number of libraries. I'll talk about that a little bit further. Uh, but you can see how many are associated with each one of these different topics. The University of Nebraska Medical Center hosts this information for uh, the National Library of Medicine. So they are constantly updating this information. So if you go into it and you find that your hospital is listed incorrectly or your library is listed incorrectly, by all means, let us know. You can send me an email and I'll get it to the right people. Uh, but uh, it's a great resource. Uh, it takes a great deal to maintain it and keep it current. And we can only do that with your help. So uh, we appreciate any assistance you can give us. I was going to ask a question about Go Local. Sure. Now, one time I know that, that the uh, medical center had some special materials that librarians could use if they wanted to take some information out, say, to a group of social workers or yes. case workers to help in human services. Do you guys still have some handouts? Absolutely. Or? In fact, uh, the University of Nebraska Med Center, and I'll talk a little bit about that more, but they do have a consumer well, health information. Have a phone call. Oh. Sorry, I'm sorry not for that. me. <laughs> uh, they do have information that they can send out to communities or libraries, and that even includes uh, not just brochures, but if you have a uh, health fair and you want a display board, they can even send that out to you. So that was a good question, Mary Jo. Thanks. Okay, let's move on. Um, our next part of Medline Plus is these interactive tutorials. And if you haven't looked at these, I think these are a terrific resource. There are about 160 different topics. These are just chapters on one particular topic. This one happens to be on LASIK surgery. But when you are using this, there'll be a green arrow down here at the bottom, and you can't quite see it from this screenshot. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, there's a green arrow down here, and you would just advance. Oops, this green arrow. Well, you would advance that for each one that you want to see. And at the end of each little chapter here, there's a couple of questions for you to answer but what I like about this is it not only has easy to read materials uh, it's very visually effective because they're just little drawings so it's not overly graphic but it also has an audio component so if someone has difficulty reading or they're doing uh, reading in a second language this is a good way for them to get that information uh, this is NIH senior health um, this obviously is getting a lot more attention. These are particularly topics that are directed at seniors. But what's nice about this is you can change the text size on this website. So you can just click uh, this little plus button up here, and it just keeps getting larger and larger and larger. So if you have someone who really needs large print, this is a terrific resource. You can also change the contrast. So instead of having it be with a white background, it can be a black background with white print. And again, you can add a speech component so people can listen to it as well as read the information. So this is a nice uh, resource for our senior population too. I happen to go to a, a workshop, and maybe some of you will be going to this workshop on senior seniors and libraries. And you know, it occurred to me as I was sitting in that we have a lot of uh, teen spaces, or children's spaces, and libraries, but we don't always have senior spaces. And maybe that's something we need to be thinking about. Some place that's quiet where they can read or chit chat or you know, however you want to focus that attention. But uh, just some. Uh, thought for your own public libraries too. Uh, Metalite Plus also has surgery videos. Most of these are about an hour long. These are very graphic. These are actual surgeries and you can see where they come from. I have watched a couple of them and uh, they're quite interesting but I'm glad it's not me. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Uh, some extras for Medline Plus. If you have not already linked Medline Plus to your website and you have one, you can get to that information by going into About Medline Plus. 
and uh, click on Add Medline Plus to your website. It will give you the code for doing so. So it should just be a copy and paste kind of function. I'll talk a little bit about Medline uh, Plus Magazine. And you can also get email updates. I recommend this just because it will keep you in tune with what kinds of topics are out there. It just comes to you as an email once a week. Um, here's information for libraries and trainers. So if you had clicked on that about Medline Plus, and then there's a place where you click on information for librarians and trainers, you can get all of this information. So here you can see um, Guide to Healthy Web Surfing. I'll talk a little bit about evaluating websites in a few minutes. Um, there are several tutorials on using Medline Plus as well as some other things and some additional resources. And I think these are well worth checking out. I would highly recommend that you get to this page and take a look at some of the resources that are here. Uh, here's Medline Plus Magazine. If you're a public library or a medical library, you can order multiple copies for this. You know, when I'm in a waiting room and I see WebMD, WebMD is not a bad website, but it is a commercial website. And I, you know, always recommend them to that office that they get Medline Plus uh, because we want to get our information out there because it's free and it's credible and it's not a commercial product. Uh, so you can do that by going on to that Medline Plus website. And when you say a library can get multiple copies, like, uh -huh. can they get like 20 copies? Yes, they can. And they'll be yeah. every every month? Just uh, it library. comes out quarterly. Quarterly, yeah. Yeah. okay. Exactly. Uh, maybe when you're thinking about doing something for the school, you can recommend this brochure. This came out from another part of the National Library of Medicine, which is Specialized Information Services. And this is resources for science teachers, but I also say it's for kids as well, because it has several different websites that include all these different topics. So I'm going to kind of zip through some of those things. Oh, I'm not going to zip through those. I'll let you zip through those. <laughs> But because I thought it would take too long to do that. Another thing they might be interested in, we have a website called HAZMAP, which stands for really hazardous kind of materials. Uh, but sometimes you have children who are searching for information on careers or even adults. And here's information on careers that they can find here. So you could find out that if you wanted to be a hairdresser, for example, or a beautician, uh, is that hazardous to your health? What kinds of things are involved there? What kinds of chemicals might affect you? A uh, household products database is to look up any kind of household product you can possibly think of. And they have broken those down for us here. So we have personal care or auto products or uh, pesticides. And you can go in and find the chemical makeup of any kind of household product. Excuse me, I'm a little cold here, so I sound a little nasal. But uh, you can also find out what to do in the case of a spillage or what you may need to do to take care of that kinds of information. So this is a really nice website too. Or maybe you're allergic to something and, and you want to check out a product before you buy it. This is a good place to go for that information. Uh, Daily Med just came out about a year and a half, two years ago, and this is to check um, prescription and over-the-counter drugs. So, for example, you could put in Lipitor, which I think is the example that I used here, and you'll see that you can get the chemical breakdown of it, and you can get about 40 pages of information. So this would be far more than you get when you get the prescription and uh, more than you may be aware of, but it will tell you about side effects. And it even has the ability that you can report back side effects that you have, which I think is a nice way for them to be able to collect information on that as well. And let me just say, uh, you know, one of the common things that a lot of libraries do is collect the physician's desk reference. We do not recommend that because that is simply uh, the compilation of all of the things that come from the drug representatives or from the pharmaceutical companies. Not really value added. That's right. It's it, not only not value added, but it can be kind of... Um, biased in their favor, shall we say. So we recommend that you go out to a, a resource such as this if you want something that's unbiased and you can see the information on both sides. Um, this one has just been added in the last couple of months, and this is called Drug Information Portal. So again, I put in search here, and you can see what it's really called by its uh, more generic name, uh, its description from a chemical standpoint. But the other thing that this gives you is a summary of where this is found in other websites from the National Library of Medicine. So here you can see it's on Medline Plus drugs, it's on Medline Plus topics, it's in Daily Med, and it's also called in, in clinical trials. So there may be some clinical trials that have already occurred or may currently be occurring around Lipitor, and you might want to research that further. 
Uh, this is the National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine. Uh, and obviously we have Western medicine and we have lots of other alternatives. So if you're interested in exploring those, this is a good place to do it because it's a, a little more reliable. So it will tell you about yoga or copper or uh, meditation or you know a number of different things that may be beneficial for your health or what the downsides may be as well. Looks like it's got information in Spanish as well on this website. Yes, it does. And we're seeing more of that in a lot of the governmental websites. They're providing it in Spanish. You know, one of the things I didn't point out on Medline Plus on the left side on the bottom is now a resource called Multiple Languages. And you can go in there and click on the language you want and see what kinds of resources are available for you. So we're collecting more than just Spanish these days, too. Mm -hmm. Good question, Mary. Good job. Uh, this one also recently came out. This one is from the American uh, Library Association. They call it Good Health Information at Your Library. This was a joint effort with the National Library of Medicine. And basically, this will take you to information on Medline Plus. But if you're particularly uh, like uh, ALE resources, um, I think this is also a good place to uh, bookmark on your uh, places to bookmark. Uh, evaluating health information, I always say when you are working with someone in your library, be sure and tell them that they need to be thinking about the websites they are looking at. And if they don't really know how to look at a website, uh, if you type evaluate in the search box of Medline Plus, you can get to this uh, National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine, where they made a list of 10 things you may need to know about evaluating medical resources on the web. So it gives you questions like who runs the site or who's paying for it or how often is it updated those kinds of things and all of us should be looking at that because we know there's great information out there but we also know there's a lot of uh, not so great information out there and we all need to be aware of that uh, Google is a terrific resource but sometimes it can give you way too much information and not the information that you're looking for now let's talk a little bit about some other resources you may be interested in. Uh, I mentioned our professional organization, the Medical Library Association. Uh, they have a subset of the Medical Library Association that is called Consumer and Patient Health Information Section, or they call it CAFIS. And uh, CAFIS has put together a list of 100 health websites that you can trust. So I think that's a good place to go check some of those out. WebMD, for example, would be on that list. Mail Clinic would be on that list. Johns Hopkins, et cetera. Then another thing they have down here is managing a consumer health information uh, source. I think that stands for it. Anyway, like if you have a small section of your public library, for example, uh, you're not quite sure how you should go about planning that or budgeting that or selecting materials for that. These are all resources that you can get to uh, that people have put together for that particular purpose. And I, I think those consumer health libraries are really becoming more popular. You're seeing them more in hospitals, and we want to make sure that we lend as much assistance as we can in order to make those uh, good places to be and not just a place to check your email. <laughs> and, well, and you've also seen uh, little sections in public libraries with yes. these kinds of resources, too. Yes. So Absolutely. that's another thing to think about. You bet it is. Uh, I'm also going to mention here uh, the National Network Libraries of Medicine. We have what we call our National Training Center and Clearinghouse. We abbreviate that with NTCC. But we have what we call an educational clearinghouse database. And I've left the URL on this PowerPoint, too. So if you go in here and you want to find a brochure for, or a pamphlet for uh, Medline Plus, it gives you a drop-down menu here. I just happened to put in Medline Plus, and I selected a pamphlet. But if you click on this, then it would take you to a link that you can print out a brochure that you can just keep in your library. Uh, likewise, it has classes here that will provide you not just the PowerPoint, but a script and a workbook and uh, loads of materials around that. So if you want to do a class on Metal Flatline Plus, you would just, instead of checking the format for pamphlet, you would check for class and uh, be provided those materials. All of those materials are free. There are no copyright restrictions. We want to make sure that you have materials 
materials that are good for you. And these are all things that generally the liaison, such as myself, have produced, and we just want to share that with uh, the rest of uh, the people who will be presenting that information. Okay, uh, this is our Mid-Continental Region website. It looks a little skewed, <laughs> it's got a little squished in there, but... Because the breath is right in the sky. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, a couple of things that I want to point out here. Member services has to do with membership. We have what we call full members, which are generally hospitals, which have at least 25 medical journals, and they're sharing uh, medical journal articles with other libraries. Uh, we also have affiliate memberships, which are for public libraries and other entities who have a consumer health collection or a collection of books or uh, things that they're sharing with the public. Now, if a school or a, a public library wants to join as an affiliate member, do they need to pay dues or? No, they don't. It's mm -hmm. free too. It's free too. <laughs> Everything's free at the National <laughs> Library of Medicine. That's why it's it. such a wonderful thing. Yeah. Uh, so yes, to find out about that, you would just click on member services and it would take you to full membership or affiliate membership. And you can look over the guidelines and you just send us information and we sign you up. It's painless. That also qualifies you to apply for uh, grants when we have them available. And uh, we can also send you promotional materials. Now, you don't need to be a member to, for us to send you promotional materials, but we can send you things like bookmarks or, uh, you know, those kinds of resources that you can have on hand at your library to do. Uh, training and educational opportunities, that's where you're going to find things like um, for example, this PowerPoint, I will have it posted on that section. But we also do different uh, webcasts that we archive there. There are a number of different resources, and you can check that. And I can't quite read you. Calendar events. Oh, yes, calendar events. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I need my other glasses on. Uh, the calendar of events, if you click on that, you'll find a listing of all the events that are happening in our six state area. So we try and preface that with Nebraska or Utah or online. If it's online, obviously anybody can get to it and geographically you're only limited by whether you want to drive somewhere to get to one of those classes. So uh, keep an eye on that, and uh, it has the details for registration or websites as you may need it. Uh, this is a, a, what we call our spotlight on National Library of Medicine and Resources. How are we doing for time? Okay. We're doing fine. Okay, great. Um, our spotlight on the National Library of Medicine is actually a new series of classes that we put out, and so we really wanted to kind of heighten that. We've sent this postcard out recently. You may have received it, or if you want to receive it, let me know, and I'll send you one. Uh, but the spotlight is actually a once-a-month training. It's an hour long. It requires that you have a phone and a PC. And so, for example, last month we did... Uh, PubMed, an update on PubMed. On February 25th, we'll be doing, looking at Medline Plus and household products. So you'll hear some of the kind, same kinds of things I talked about today. But we, exer we have included exercises in these because what we have heard back from people when we've sent out surveys is they like hearing about this stuff, but they wish they had time to practice. And so we have included some exercises in there that they can sit at their desk and practice. This does not require any kind of download to your computer, so a firewall should not be any kind of an issue. All you have to do is go to the URL, uh, which we have given you here, and uh, then you type in your phone number, and the phone system then will call you. So you just sit at your desk and you can listen to this. I recommend getting a headset for your phone if you don't already have one. It's a very convenient thing to have when you have these sort of activities. And if you find that you're like in a one-person library and you can't sit down for that kind of thing, uh, these are also archived. So you can go back and listen to them and then do the practice at your own leisure if that works better for you. 
So now, um, do people have to pre-register for these, or do they just log in at the time? No, they just log in at the time. We have uh, seats for more than 50 people, so uh, we welcome your participation, and I don't think we exceed that too frequently. Once in a while, we'll get a real hot session. But uh, we like to have you participate in these. As I said, again, it's all free, no pre-registration, and if you can't get to it, go to the archive session. Uh, breezing along with the RML, we've been doing these for a couple of years as uh, web conferences, and these are kind of updates on what we're doing in our six state area. So that may include some different things. You can see some of our topics here, presentation from the staff. We uh, all kind of uh, did a presentation to the National Library of Medicine a couple of months ago, and so that will be included here. We're going to talk about historical collections in March, which is one of the programs I'll be hosting. And what's that? Uh, you know, a lot of medical libraries actually have historical collections. Like a museum. Like a museum, a small museum. So, for example, at the Magoogan Library of Medicine, we have a person who staffs that full time, and they are responsible for keeping those collections uh, in good shape. And they can be worth a lot of money as well, but people will go in there and do research to uh, find out things that happened long ago. We have books uh, dating back to the 1500s, so oh, wow. you'd be surprised. Leeches and everything. Well, we don't <laughs> carry the live leeches, no. <laughs> but you could find out about them. <laughs> So anyway, uh, some interesting topics. And as I mentioned, that calendar of events is available too for you to see all of the things that we uh, have for you as educational opportunities. Uh, this was put out a few years ago. I always just like to mention it though, particularly with public libraries, or again, if you're working with a school, the uh, Google Library of Medicine, I was part of this team when they put this together, put together this DVD and it's really aimed at children and their parents to show them how to go to the doctor, how to make an appointment. Because we were finding that some immigrant populations really did not know how to do this. So this is available as a DVD. If you would like to have one, you can get a free copy. You would just go to this URL. Or if you would like to see it streaming, you can also go to that same URL and get that information. Uh, it's about 10 minutes long. Uh, it's available in English, in Spanish, and Sudanese. So you can listen to it in any one of those three languages. Oh, you know, and I just can't, I have to say, Marty, I think that this is just a great resource. I think it's so well done, and it's Good. so much fun. And Good. it's free to public libraries, school libraries, hospitals. So I just don't, I think everyone exactly. should order one of these. They're just terrific. You have, to have a lot of them left. <laughs> We, see, we have enough. We have enough. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> so I'm glad to hear that, Mary Jo. It's nice to hear that from somebody else. Uh, as I mentioned, the McGugan Library of Medicine uh, does have resources. They have the Consumer Health Information Resource Service. That includes the work that they do on Go Local. It also includes a reference service. So if you're a resident of the state of Nebraska, or if you have any patrons who are obviously residents, they can call, email, or write uh, the university. The reference librarians there will put together a packet of information. Let's say they have a diagnosis that they're having a hard time finding information on. Uh, they will provide this service. And again, the service is free. The fact that we have this in Nebraska and have had it for about 20, a little more than 20 years, is a terrific resource. And we want to make sure that people know about that. So when they're really stuck, this is a terrific place to go. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a this is for consumers. Yes. This is not yeah. for doctors to call in or to. That this is, is correct. actually someone who has a health issue. They want to have information. About. That's right. So probably not for school children to get information for their no. no, and we don't want to be doing your homework. Yeah. So yeah. A good. But, but we can help them find those other resources. There's plenty That's of right. There's plenty of other things. Uh, this was a new project that we tried uh, this year. Maybe some of you have taken the Web 2.0 kinds of classes and been exposed to something like Google Docs. 
Well, we had a, a practicum student at uh, Magoog, and Michael Stratman, and he actually works at the uh, University of Nebraska Lincoln Libraries. And so we put together this collaborative project. So this has four different topics, and it, it includes information on Medline Plus, information on the local Nebraska, information on the Cheers uh, project, as well as the evaluation of websites. And essentially what he did for us was take the information that we gave him, and then we collaborated on this. So Google Docs uh, is like doing a PowerPoint, but instead of having it stored on your computer, it's stored out there in Google land. And uh, anybody can get to this. So you would just go to Google and you would type in Nebraska Notebook and it would take you to this information. You may have to sign up for a free Google account to get to it, but there's no charge for doing it. And you could even take this information and then add slides to it if you wanted to for your library and then save it on the Google Docs. Uh, so, but the Nebraska Notebook, it stays in its entirety, but you could go out there and change it for other purposes and save it under a different name. So we think this is kind of a fun resource and it was a good experiment for us so that if I wanted to change something, I could go change something. If Michael was changing something, he could change something. And we didn't even have to be in the same place. So uh, this is a terrific resource and uh, something I would urge you to try sometime. Uh, here's a CD. Um, I made this a couple of years ago, but I do have some copies left. Uh, this is a CD, so if you don't have a good internet access, this just has some little tutorials on it. You can see uh, the time on each one of the tutorials. There are eight tutorials in all, and uh, you can just email me if you want a copy. Uh, the librarian is in. This also was a resource that was done a few years back. Actually, we're kind of thinking about redoing it at this point. But it is a um, video that you would have ordered, so you can see why we need to redo it. <laughs> and uh, it, it kind of tells you how to do reference. So, for example, if you're doing reference on a private topic with someone, you may not want to be doing it out where everyone else can hear what you're saying. So uh, this is a resource. This is also available through the Nebraska Library Commission. You can check it out. You can order it. Now that one, I think, costs about $20 for both the video and the uh, uh, workbook. But I think checking it out from the Library Commission would be a great resource. And I did just verify that you have it. Uh, we do have some training coming up. I wanted to mention we have three classes coming up in February, Thursday and Friday, the 19th and 20th. You can sign up for one class or all three classes. And you may remember earlier in the presentation where I told you about the Educational Clearinghouse. These are three classes that are straight off that Educational Clearinghouse that other liaisons have created. So the first one is Beyond an Apple a Day, which is providing consumer health information at your library. The second one is No Comprende, which is Spanish resources. And the third one is the ABCs of DNA, or uh, genetic information that you may be interested in exploring. Uh, we do still have slots left for these. Email me if you're interested. Again, it's all free. And it's at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. The classes are in the Guggen Library. Medicine. And that's easy to find in Omaha. You can, it is. You can drive into Omaha yeah. and uh, yeah. the good directions off the interstate. You just zip right off the interstate and you're there. You bet. Part it is your probably your hardest challenge, but we'll <laughs> give you all the information beforehand. I'm going to share a few promotional ideas here as we start to close this out. Um, I like this one. This one's called My Family Health Portrait. So uh, they, they recommend this as an activity for Thanksgiving because you may not have other kinds of activities at Thanksgiving. But you could promote it at any time of year, obviously. This one happens to be my, my family tree and their genetic health. So you can see uh, 
the sort of the symbols are different for women and men. Uh, when they're deceased, there's an X through it. You can either print this off and then just fill it out as you would like to, or you can fill it out electronically and then store it on this site. So if there were other members of your family somewhere else in the United States, they could pick this up and uh, fill in their information. This is really a valuable thing. If you are doing genetic kinds of information, you can sort of start to track what kinds of things are happening in your family. See, I think this would be a great activity for school kids. Yes, it would. And absolutely. For a health science class or, or yeah. even uh, yeah. just a, a, if they're doing some kind of uh, genealogy. Yes. To add this to the genealogy. Yes, it would be a nice uh, tie in. Mm -hmm. Uh, and speaking of other things that you can do with kids and what kinds of promotions you can do, if you haven't seen this, this comes from the National Health Information Center, which is part of Health and Human Services. And so you can find at any given time a holiday to celebrate. <laughs> so uh, did you know, for example, that February is National Wise Health Consumer Month? I bet you didn't. I did not. <laughs> yeah. But isn't this topical? <laughs> Here we are in February. Exactly. Training librarians to go out and help those consumers be wiser about their health. Very true. So uh, for each thing that you click on, it will give you the information, for example, that I've shown here in the box uh, where it says National Wise Health Consumer Month. So uh, there are multiple holidays uh, every month. So um, it might be a fun thing to highlight in your uh, library, maybe around your consumer health collection if you have one. Uh, this one is a little bit different, but I think this is a great way to make a connection with your local hospital. Uh, we are, as you well realize, is trying to get people to use Medline Plus because it is a great, free, credible, reliable resource. So you as librarians or uh, health professionals can order these little prescription pads uh, which look like this. So this looks like your prescription pad and it has the medlineplus.gov up here. So if you want to find out more information on it, here is the National Network Library of Medicine URL, which is the one that I've shown here. And then if you want to order these little prescription pads, you can go here. And you can also order little uh, tabletop posters uh, with a little pad that can be attached. So it could be given to a doctor's office or a hospital for that purpose. This is such a great idea. It is. <laughs> I like it, and you know, maybe one of the other things you want to do is, you know, maybe have a stamp made of your public library, and you could also stamp that on there so that they would know where to go for your resources. And I always uh, recommend if you don't have a stamp, just use those mailing labels, but print them on clear mailing labels. Oh, great idea! Put anything you want on it. Very good. Say about your library with your phone number and all that. Absolutely, good idea. Okay, I have pushed a lot of information out here. And, and so, uh, yep, I am gonna turn it back to uh, Kristen to continue driving. I, I do wanna mention a couple of other points, uh, or maybe Kristen will mention about uh, the PowerPoints and oh, the podcast. Mm -hmm. I'll let you mention those. Um, first, let's just see, does anybody have any um, questions about all this information that you just don't throw at you. <laughs> um, anything you want to know more about? Any questions about any particular sites um, that were mentioned? You can either use the microphone if you have one or use a text chat box. We do have that up and open here so we can see what you're talking about on there. We must have a fairly knowledgeable group. No, no nobody questions. has any questions this morning? Okay. Um, that's fine. Oh, okay, good. You tell us that you don't have a question. That's great. 
And we never know. We were, we're just waiting to see. Are you, you just trying to figure out how to work your microphone? Find the text box. Text box. The ch text chat button is the upper right hand of your interface. Do you do want to use that? I guess um, we might have a couple of yes or no questions to ask, and you can answer those by clicking your green check mark or your red X. I think the first question I would ask all of you is whether or not this format worked for you to get this kind of information. Because Marty had quite a lot of information, a lot of websites, and did this seem to work for you to get that kind of information? Um, we got a couple of green marks. But they seem to be like easy. Oh, we do have a question finally. Um, will Marty come out to libraries and do a presentation for the community? Uh, I would say it depends. <laughs> <laughs> As you might well guess, our travel funds are becoming more limited, which is one of the reasons we like to explore all these web conferences. But you know, honestly, there's probably no reason you couldn't do this kind of web conference in your library if you have a projector. You just need to hook up your projector to a computer. If you have a speakerphone, you know, we could hear each other on the speakerphone. Mm -hmm. So I think there are possibilities for that. One of the other things I'm exploring is uh, some of you I know are associated with hospitals. We are going to be looking at the telehealth network. You may or may not know that they have video conferencing um, available in all of the um, hospitals in the state. And so we're kind of thinking about doing a program and pushing it out to the hospitals that way. But there's no reason that public librarians couldn't also attend that. So um, watch for that information in the future. And that as it depends kind of part, if you indicate to me that you really think you need a presentation um, and I'm headed your way, I can probably work that in. Obviously, most of my travel happens along I-80, so you're luckier if you're in that direction. But I really want to encourage you to do the presentation. That's really why that educational clearinghouse is out there. It's giving you all the materials to do that. And uh, certainly, if you need any help with anything, I can assist in that also. So I hope that answers your question. Now, this also, this PowerPoint presentation is available for people too. They can use sure. parts of this. You bet. Because like yeah. um, the as we do with all of our Encompass Live sessions, um, this PowerPoint goes up to the Library Commission's SlideShare account, which is a website where you can share PowerPoints with people. Um, and it's downloadable from there, and you can download it to your computer, and then tweak it, change it, do it whatever you want with it to present to your um, community. Uh, you know, take Marty's name off, put your name on. You know, ask her for exactly. advice on what to say, of course. <laughs> you know, um, but it's out there, and so you can use bits and pieces of it. If there's certain sites that you want to just focus on, you know, just pull those bits and pieces from it. It's available out there and also the individual websites that are listed are also in the library commission's delicious account which is a website where you collect bookmarks that you can go to um the link for that will be on with the power of the presentation up as well um but you can go to delicious.com and the library commission's account you can look for it's nlc underscore reference for reference and then you can search for encompass life and health and you'll find all the links that she mentions in this presentation as well for you know quick general to those if you want to. So um, I particularly want to thank Krista for doing that. I think it's a terrific <laughs> resource to be able to do that and delicious and um, gives you those and you can uh, show that to your patrons. They sure. can use those delicious accounts as well. So yeah. uh, it's a good way for them to be shown those kinds of websites. Yeah, all the, these delicious and slideshare, they're also, they're free. So you can set up your own accounts there to collect your own bookmarks um, or have your patrons set up their own accounts to share things and find stuff, resources and information. Um, oh, and Janet, the text says we like the presentation format, especially the archive feature. Yes, we like the saving of the uh, recordings as well. We only can have a limited number of people in here, so at a time, so we like being able to record these, so anyone can listen to these after the fact. Marty, did you have any other yes or no questions you wanted to ask? Um, you know, I guess I would just like 
to know whether you thought that this really met the objectives, and maybe that's the same as the other question that we had, but, you know, our objectives were really to tell you about some web, web resources uh, that came from the National Library of Medicine, those that came from other resources that we mentioned, and the promotional materials and how to interface a little bit, some ideas that you might do in your community. Uh, do you think that this um, web conference met those objectives? And again, you can do this with your yes or no, which are located at the top of your screen. Mm -hmm. I guess we prefer it if we did this anonymously because probably no one's <laughs> going to say no when we see your name. Uh, we are actually, yes, I think about that. We are working on getting an evaluation out there for our Encompass Lives um, that would be anonymous. So you just go to a website uh, called Surface Monkey that we have um, and just do an anonymous uh, evaluation of all our sessions. So hopefully that will be coming soon. Well, good. Good to know. Yeah. Get some more uh, feedback on how we're doing. Um, People are attending, so that's a good thing. <laughs> it is, absolutely. <laughs> so are there any last minute questions or suggestions? Well, Marty, thank you so much for joining us today. Mm -hmm. Marty McGee from the National Network Libraries of Medicine. She's based at the McGugan Library of Medicine at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Mm -hmm. You're getting applause. And we're getting some applause. Oh, oh my God. Thank you so much. Uh, Laura, do you have a question? You've got your hand raised there. Did you click your own button by it? No? Okay. No problem. <laughs> Thank you all very much for joining us, and we'll see you again if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. See you again next week at 10 o'clock Central Time, 9 yes. o'clock Mountain Time, for what are we going to talk about next week? What do we have next week? Oh, so next week is our um, Nebraska Learns 2.0 wrap-up. Some of you may have been doing the 23 Things in Nebraska Learns program, um, and we're going to have a session on how that went. It ended just um, last week, the January 30th, and see how it all turned out, how people did it, and um, give away some prizes for who did it. Um, the session has been recorded, so the recordings will be up um, hopefully this afternoon. I'll get that all taken care of as you listen to the recording. And I said, see the PowerPoint if you don't already have a hold of it and the links that are available out there. So if there's no other questions, thank you very much for attending. Thank you, Krista. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.